So, three things I want to accomplish today. First, I've got roughly 25, 30 minutes maybe worth of notes. Okay? Second, you, I want you to then work on, after we get done with notes, I want you to work on the white sheet that you picked up when you came into class today. Third, before you leave today at 3 o'clock, I want you to take a formative assessment. Okay? So there's three things that I want you to get done before we get done with class today. Okay? First off, um, you were supposed to watch a, a short little video about uh, rotational speed, angular speed, and linear speed before you came to class today. Um, hopefully, you took some notes while you were watching that video. Okay? One of the things that you should have taken notes on is this, which we call the speed chart. Okay? If you didn't write down the speed chart, you've got about 45 seconds to get it written down. Okay? And then you should start taking notes when you're watching the videos as a future reference. Okay? Right? So we have three different kinds of speeds out there when we're talking about circular motion. The first speed, so the first speed is rotational speed. It is revolutions over a certain amount of time. Now, the most common one that you will see is RPM. Revolutions per minute. Okay? How many times the object goes around in a circle every excuse me, every minute. Okay? You've probably seen RPMs, the tachometer on your car. Okay? That's that's talking the the speed that your engine is revving up on the push buttons on my paper. Okay. The next one is angular speed. Angular speed is just that. How many angles, how many radian angles, or how many radians, I should say, did that object go as it went around the circle in a certain amount of time? Okay. When you're working the speed chart, you have to go from speed to speed. So the conversion to go from rational or rotational speed to angular speed is that one revolution is equal to two pi radians. That's the conversion going back and forth between those two. Hmm? Angular speed will be given in radians per minute, radians per hour, radians per second, some kind of radians per time frame. Okay? Linear speed is the speed that you are probably most familiar with, miles per hour, feet per second, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Centimeters per day or something along those lines. Okay? Right? That's most common that you're probably familiar with. Okay? And the conversion between those two is going to be dependent upon the size of your circle. What we do know is that, oops, not T radians, is that one radian is equal to one radius. One radian of arc length is equal to, or one radian sweeping through along the edge of your circle is equal to one radius of your circle, 
Okay? And this radius will depend on the circle. That's where the different sized circles will come into play. From linear speed, we can find a specific distance that an object traveled. Yes, it's traveling in a circle, but as it's going around that circle, okay, it is traveling a set distance. Okay? And we find that by multiplying by time. However long, how fast we're going around the circle times how long we go around the circle will tell us how far we went in terms of a distance. The kicker there is that your time needs to be in the units of your linear speed. So if I'm dealing with feet per second, I can't multiply by two minutes. I'd have to multiply by 120 seconds. If I'm dealing in miles per hour, I can't multiply by 13 minutes because minutes doesn't cancel out hours. I'd have to convert 13 minutes into what part of an hour it is. Okay? So, let's try some application type problems here. A truck wheel with a diameter of 36 inches rotates at three, or excuse me, 630 revolutions per minute. Find the speed of the truck in miles per hour. All right? Well, we're given two key pieces of data here. The first is that our truck tire is rotating at 630 revolutions per minute. That tells me that we are in a rotational speed at 630 revs per minute. To go from, we want to find the speed of the truck in miles per hour or the linear speed. So we need to go down our speed chart to linear speed. So first, we are going to convert this into angular speed. Okay? So one revolution is two pi radians. And I put it like that so that my labels of revolutions cancel each other out. Currently, my label now is radians per minute. Okay? So I am in angular speed of radians per minute. Now, I can go to linear speed if I knew the radius of my circle. What is the radius of my circle? Radius of my circle. 18 inches, because labels matter, right? Okay. It says here that the diameter of my circle is 36 inches, which half of that then would be my radius. Okay. So the diameter of my circle is 36 inches. That means my radius is 18 inches. There, now we can see the inches part. Okay. So that is going to be what I'm going to multiply by now to get rid of my radian. 
one radian is 18 inches. And now I'm in inches per minute. <coughs> I want to get to miles per hour. So let's convert inches into miles. There are 12 inches in one foot. Now I'm in feet per minute. There are 5,280 feet per mile. Now I'm in miles per minute. So then I need to convert 60 minutes is one hour. And we get that. Okay. Multiplying a lot of fractions, I'm going to multiply across the top. So that's going to give me 630 times 2 pi times 18 times 60 is going to give me 1, 3, 6, 0, 8, 0, 0 pi over 12 times 5,280 is 63,360. If I were if we were asking for an exact answer, the exact answer would be 945 pi over 44 miles per hour. A more rounded answer would be 67.4728 miles per hour. Okay. Ready to try one on your own, or do you have questions about that? Let's do it then. A bike with a 28 inch diameter wheels is racing at a speed of 36 feet per second. How many revolutions per minute are the wheels making? Go for it. So we started out at 36 feet per second. Which kind of speed is 36 feet per second? Can we get express? Linear. Linear. Okay. What do I want to get it in? Rotational. Rotational. So I got to go all the way up the chart. Okay. So my first conversion going up the chart is one radian is one radius. Right? Okay. What's the problem with one radian is equal to one radius? Why not? So my radius is 14 inches off the start, right? And why is that not good? Because it's not in feet. I'm in 36 feet per second. So before I can even do that, I need to convert feet into inches. Okay. So one foot is 12 inches off the start. Now I'm in inches 
per second. Now I can use my one radian is one radius. So 14 inches is one radian. Revolutions now, right? Because I'm in angular, radians per second. Okay, so that would be two pi radians is one revolution. That puts me at revolutions per second. Is that what I want? What do I want? Per minute, so I need to convert seconds now. So 60 seconds is one minute. And now I'm in revolutions per minute, which is what I wanted to be in. So I multiply across the top, 36 times 12 times 60 gets me 25,920. Multiplying across the bottom gets me 28 pi. In my exactness, that would be 6,480 divided by 7 pi revolutions per minute, or RPMs. In approximate form, I get 294.664 RPMs. Yes, um? Questions on that one? Two washing machine questions for you. Okay. First off, a washing machine does rotate at about 1,400 revolutions per minute when it's on full spin. Okay. So that is, that is factual. Okay. So if the drum, that's what you put your clothes in, if that drum is 27 centimeters in radius, What's Grant Sock spinning at? Give me a speed of Grant Sock. And if it spins for 15 minutes on the spin cycle, we went extra spin, how far did Grant's Sock travel? One thing that you will need to know is you will need to know that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters, according to page 134 of your Find me those two. So a washing machine spinning at 1400 revolutions per minute. Okay. Me, I like to get rid of my time right away.
I want it in miles per hour, so I'm going to get rid of the minutes right away. Then it's gone, then it's out of the way. Okay. So now I need to go into, I'm in rotational speed. Now I need to go into angular speed. So angular speed is going to be one revolution is two pi radians. That gets rid of revolutions. Now I'm in radians per hour. Okay. One radian is 27 centimeters. Because that's my radius. Now I'm in centimeters per hour. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. Now I'm in, in inches per hour. One foot is 12 inches. Now I'm in feet per hour. Five thousand, oops, excuse me, wrong side. One mile is 5,280 feet. Now I'm in miles per hour, which is what I want it to be in. So multiplying all of those together, that gives me 43 excuse me, 45, 45, 3, 6, pi over 1, 6, 0, 9, 3, 4, point 4. Not the nicest of all fractions, but still, oops. by that gets me I get here this is approximately the sock is spinning at 88.547 miles per hour so your clothes are kind of moving in your washing machine that's how they get Semi dry. The spin to get rid of the water. Okay. Then come down here. I'm going to start with the fact that I am traveling at 88.547 miles per hour. Oops, let's put it as miles per hour. Can I just multiply by 15? Why not, Lucas? Not an hour, right? So 15 minutes is what part of an hour? A fourth or 0.25? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to multiply here by 0.25 hours, and that cancels out my hours leaving me with just miles, and I get approximately 22.137 miles that that sock traveled just on spin cycle. Not the swooshing part, just on the spin cycle. Okay? This concludes thing number one of class today. The first goal that we wanted to accomplish in class today. Thing number two is 
You've all got a white sheet that you picked up when you came in to class today. Um, so that can be worked on now. But sometime before 3 o'clock, everybody needs to complete this blue formative assessment, the front side. When you're done with this blue formative assessment, I have answers posted up here and in the back of the room for the formative. I also have answers posted for the white sheet in the front, the back, and up here by Spresso, too. I've got both kinds of answers there for you. Okay? So you have plenty of things to do here in the next 